How did a bitter feud between Nazis help create one of the world's iconic athletic brands? And why does this company have some dark history behind its origins? Today, we're going to be looking into the mysterious and controversial history of Adidas and answering the question of just what exactly transpired between the two founders. Before the story of Adidas, we travel back into time between two brothers who share a particular passion for shoemaking. Starting out in a more modest operation than what we see today, brothers Adolf and Rudolf Dassler decided to change the course of their life when they started a factory in 1924. The company known as the Dassler Brothers Shoe Factory was taken from inspiration after Adolf found a hobby of making shoes in his mother's laundry room after he came back from World War I. The Dassler brothers were natives of Herzogenaurach in Germany, a city with just over 20,000 residents and a long history of shoemaking. The brothers had to put up a stationary bike in order to generate enough power to run the machinery they needed to construct their sports shoes in the early year of their business because the town's electrical supply was inconsistent. From their humble beginnings, they achieved their first significant success at the 1936 Berlin Olympics. The Dassler brothers' spiked athletic shoe, then known as Geda, gained notoriety when American sprinter Jesse Owens decided to run in it and famously won four gold medals. The athletes who took part in the famous games while wearing Geda shoes won seven gold medals, five silver medals and five bronze medals. From this, Addy and Rudy were selling 200,000 pairs of shoes annually in the years. The company was a success. In fact, for a while, the brothers were the only ones in Germany who could produce such sports shoes. But this success would eventually become a dark secret that the brand has poured millions into burying. Not only that, but this success would contribute to a dreadful period in German history, prompted a family conflict between the two brothers and tore apart their business, their family and even the small Bavarian town they had grown up with. Because of this success, after the Nazis took control of Germany, the firm would become a significant supplier to Hitler youth groups. Even during the 1936 Berlin Summer Olympics, the German teams wore them as their official athletic footwear. The brothers would continue to serve in the administration, which led them both to enthusiastically join the Nazi party, and so Adi and Rudi became both Nazi party members. The production of the sports shoes made famous by the Dassler brothers was eventually stopped during World War II, rather forcefully, so that their facility could be repurposed to create the Panzerschreck or the Tank Terror, a rocket launcher designed to destroy tanks. There were reportedly at least nine forced labourers employed by the business. Rudolf attempted to persuade the Nazi party's top brass to give him permission to manufacture patented army boots, but his efforts were in vain. Until the Allies came in and took over their town, the Dassler factory would keep producing weapons and equipment for the Wehrmacht. After the war, the American denazification campaign and the persecution of high-ranking Nazi party members would limit the brothers' cooperation. The Americans interviewed Rudolf because he was thought to be a member of this elite group of Nazis. He was detained in a Hamelberg internment camp until his release on July 31st, 1946, when it was determined that there was no basis for their suspicions. Adolf wouldn't escape punishment either. Additionally, he was detained by those in charge of the denazification effort and put on trial in exchange for his cooperation. Adolf was eventually determined to be a Belastata, a term used to describe a group of people who benefited from the Nazi government. It brought a 10-year penalty and the possibility that Adolf would lose his position as CEO of the Dassler company. It was seen as the second most serious charge during the trials, just below actually being a member of and cooperating with the Nazi party. His early involvement with the Hitler Youth and his membership in the Nazi party was cited as evidence of this strong belief. Only the half-Jewish mayor of Herzog and Iraq, a dependable ally, could save him. He supported Adolf's claims of being unconnected to the political wing of the Nazi party by testifying that Adolf had informed him of a prospective Gestapo arrest and protected him on his own land. He consequently downgraded to the lesser offence level of Minder Belastete, which carried a two to three year sentence. As a result, Adolf would continue to lose influence over his Dassler company, which his brother Rudolf would try to take advantage of. The decades-long collaboration between Addy and Rudy broke down after World War II. There are many rumours floating around regarding what turned the brothers from partners to adversaries. 
According to one theory, the wives of Addie and Rudy did not get along. Rudy had abandoned his duties on the front lines of the war, and when returning home, the Allies detained and imprisoned him because he was an SS member. But ultimately, the most supported reason was that Rudolf was an adamant supporter of National Socialism. This developed into an ideological rift, increasing the already growing gap between the two brothers. So we're here to set the record straight. While Adolf was busy appealing to have his status reduced from Minder Melastata, or lesser offender, Rudolf would claim that Adolf had organised the production of weapons independently and for his own gain rather than under duress. Rudolf also claimed that he had resisted the change of production, but he personally could not stop it because he had been drafted into the Wehrmacht in 1943. The company's financial records, which indicated a loss of 100,000 German marks throughout the time of weapon production, would show this to be untrue. Adolf's wife, Katja Dassler, would dispute the most of Rudolf's assertions, and she was successful in getting her husband downgraded to Mitlufa, which is German for follower, allowing him to continue running the shoe factory with some monitoring still needed from the denazification board. On February the 3rd, 1947, Adolf could formally resume his administration of the firm. The brothers would end up becoming mortal foes because of Rudolf's claims made during the trials and his ongoing battle to remove Adolf from the company's leadership. With each family blaming the other for many of the issues they encountered during the war, relations between the two families grew increasingly antagonistic. As a result, Adidas and Puma were born. The beginning of Adidas and Puma as we know them today occurred in 1947. Adolf, still in control of the previous Dassler shoe factory, sought to rebrand and as a result came up with Adi which is Adolf's nickname, and Das from his last name. Rudolf also wanted to create a brand and followed a similar path to his brother, initially creating Ruda, both Ru from his first name and Da from his last name, something he would later change. Finally coming up with the name Puma Shoe Fabric Rudolf Dazzler. This intense competition between the two businesses would split them apart in Herzogenerak, their hometown. Because it was believed that everyone would glance down to see what brand of shoes we were wearing, the town earned the moniker, the town of bent necks. Some people capitalised on this rivalry, such as handymen who went to Rudolf's house dressed in Adidas shoes, with the intention of getting a free pair of Puma shoes from his basement. Even the town's two football teams were divided between two companies, with 1FC Herzogenerak wearing Puma and ASV Herzogenerak wearing Adidas. The two companies' employees avoided one another. They visited different stores, barber shops, bars and bakeries, it was well known that every company in the town supported either Adidas or Puma, but never both. The brothers' relationship never fully recovered. Adi and Rudy were interred in different sections of the municipal cemetery when they passed away in the 1970s. With Adi in charge, Adidas and its recognisable three-striped shoe made significant strides into the athletic sector, with the release of their football boot. The 1954 World Cup marked a turning point. Adi's football boots had removable screw-in spikes that could be changed out depending on the weather and weighed half as much as the other footwear. This breakthrough allowed the West Germans to stun the world by defeating Hungary in the World Cup final, despite being behind by two goals. Adidas became a household name all over the world thanks to the televised game. However, there is still debate over which sibling is really to blame for the invention that fueled Adidas's early success. There is no denying though that Adidas continued to pioneer new technologies over time, maybe occasionally encouraged by the brothers' savage rivalry. When Adidas extended its product line and debuted the tracksuit in 1960s, the firm came up with an idea that would soon become a wardrobe essential for individuals all over the world. Of course, athletes had access to tracksuits before this, but in 1967, Adidas made its tracksuit widely available, complete with its recognisable three stripes down the sleeves and legs. Adidas's tracksuit quickly established itself as a standard in any casual fitness enthusiast wardrobe during the fitness fad of jogging in the 1970s in the United States, and it has held that position ever since. Adidas also developed a partnership with the World Cup in the 1970s that has resulted in the firm providing soccer balls for each subsequent World Cup. Adidas began expanding into the United States in the 1980s, establishing Adidas USA in 1986. When the rap group Run DMC started wearing Adidas as their signature look and wrote the song My Adidas, the Adidas shoe and tracksuit transcended joggers to become part of pop culture. The group's devotion to the brand was organic, 
The company didn't even realise what was happening until an employee attended a Run DMC concert and witnessed it firsthand. Adidas reported $22.4 billion in global sales in 2021. It is the second biggest sportswear and athletic shoe company in the world and the largest in Europe. Meanwhile, Puma, the third largest brand in the world, continued to close the gap with $5.9 billion in total revenue through 2021. Both businesses are not currently governed by Dassler founding members. The rivalry between Puma and Adidas still remains, despite the fact that this is currently less relevant than the one between Nike and Adidas. It is not unexpected that the Old Town rivalry still manifests itself today, given the size of both enterprises in a vast and fiercely competitive industry. Despite the troubled histories of both businesses, their innovations should not be disregarded in the annals of time. To correctly measure the relevance of such circumstances, we must always consider the contexts.